Hey, have you noticed this? Earth's hottest day. The Earth had its hottest day. Hottest day. All time high four days in a row. Which results in this. Now, drought trends in the Horn of Africa. Day after day of no significant rain. The water scarcity risk across Europe. A big and growing problem caused by global warming. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. Climate change. And also human actions resulting in desertification, also known as land degradation. The expansion of desert land. We're talking about deserts you already know, like the Sahara Desert and a lesser known desert like the Gobi Desert, but also new ones like the Sahel region in Africa. Because there's no good food. I'm not even healthy. No fish, no meat, no nothing for the people. The Sahel region, a transitional zone between the Sahara to the north and the Sudanian savanna to the south, has been affected most by desertification. And because of this, millions of people flee this region and immigrate towards urban areas, neighboring countries, or even Europe, displacing a lot of African people. And to fight this without violence, people are planting trees. Yes, you heard that right, trees. And this is how they do that. The Great Green Wall Initiative has restored more than 18 million hectares of land created more than 335,000 jobs and led to more than $90 million increase in revenue across 11 countries. Thousands of kilometers of trees are being planted across the Sahel region, like the Great Chinese Wall, but then green, to stop the desert from growing, also called the Great Green Wall. Is this a recent initiative? No, we've been at it for a long time in several regions around the world, such as Team Trees, a 2019 initiative started by YouTubers Mr. Beast and Mark Robert, aiming to plant 20 million trees, or Billion Tree Campaign, led by the United Nations Environment Program, or UNEP. And to name another ambitious project, Project Green Hands. An initiative in India, this project seeks to increase the green cover and has planted millions of trees, primarily in the state of Tamil Nadu. But is this going to work? Can we stop the growing desert? Desertification. 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 Would you like to subscribe to our channel? That will help spread the word. That's for sure. Let's talk about the desert food. We can call something a desert when there's almost no precipitation. Rain, snowfall, or hail. And when I say almost, I mean zero to none. Less than 10 inches of precipitation a year. And maybe you're thinking of the word desert. Dry, hot and sand. But no, this is also a desert. The biggest desert on Earth. The Antarctic Desert. Also known as Antarctica. A lot of water, but then dry. But we're getting sidetracked. Because when talking about a desert, you're probably thinking about this. Sand. A lot of sand. That's what we're going to talk about today. When we look at this desert, the Sahara, the biggest hot desert on Earth. As you can see, there is an abundance of sand. And this big pile of sand is still growing. And in the past 100 years, it grew 10% while 40% of our Earth's surface is already desert. So livable land on Earth is shrinking, while the population on Earth is growing. I think you're starting to see our problem. Because would you want to live in a desert? No? Me neither. So I guess you could understand why people are fleeing their home and immigrating to places where they have a brighter future. I think it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of luck, it takes great bravery to make it um, but through the Sahara Desert, uh, through the Mediterranean. According to the United Nations, desertification has a negative influence for over 3 billion people. That's because of deforestation, overgrazing, agriculture and political instability or a combination of it. But where are all these deserts? Here, on this map. And if you zoom in on Europe, you'll see that Europe doesn't have a desert. But there's a catch, because the southern part of Europe has to deal with desertification. Much of Europe has suffered through repeated heat waves. The advance of deserts in Spain could prove unstoppable. Parts of Europe are in the midst of severe drought. Wildfires ravaged parts of Spain. Simply put, 
With desertification, more water evaporates than the amount of rain that falls. This self-reinforcing process has implications for regions worldwide. Take Southern Europe, for example. While it only contributes to approximately 5% of the global food production, it is a world leader in wine and olive oil production. The implications of desertification could jeopardize these significant agricultural outputs. Imagine a piece of land where trees have been removed or where livestock has grazed all the vegetation. Now, with the sunlight directly hitting the soil, it dries up. Over time, this land becomes barren with nothing growing on it. You too might unknowingly contribute to this issue. Take, for example, Spain and Mexico. Every summer it attracts millions of tourists. Sounds delightful, right? A vacation, lounging by the pool with a drink in hand. The Spaniards and Mexicans are certainly happier there, as many parts of Spain and Mexico rely heavily on tourism. 15% of Spain's GDP comes from tourism. And in Mexico, 8.5%. However, beneath the vibrant tourist life, there's a significant and chronic water shortage that cannot be ignored. Extreme drought conditions persist in northern Mexico. So while you're enjoying a dip in the pool, the water reserves are decreasing. And the result? You've guessed it right. Desertification. And from such challenges arise initiatives like tree planting. Like this initiative. This project is carrying out landscape restoration based on both plantations and sowing techniques. This is a method to combat desertification. Because if you can keep a tree alive in arid regions, it provides shade. This shade cools the ground, allowing the soil to retain more moisture. From this moisture, clouds can form. These clouds lead to rain, offering a chance to reverse the effects of desertification. Europe is implementing this process on a small scale. In Africa, however, they are doing this on a larger scale. For example, this project. This is the Sahara Forest Project, a venture that aims to transform arid desert land into fertile green areas. Now, back to the Sahara. An expanse as vast as massive countries like the US or China, but imagine it as an endless stretch of parched land where nothing grows. It's not a place you'd want to live, and indeed, almost no one does. However, just south of the Sahara, there are people living in the Sahel region. The Sahel is a semi-arid transition zone sandwiched between the bone-dry desert on one side and the wetter savannas on the other. Here, there are occasional rains and sparse vegetation. Yet, this very region is highly vulnerable to desertification and is drying up at an alarming rate. It's been difficult because farmers are used to recycling seed. So adopting these improved technologies has been a challenge. We're seeing a rise of 10 to 15 percent of cases this year because of bad harvest and lack of rain. What has also nearly vanquished is Lake Chad, located right in the heart of the Sahel, bordering Chad, Cameroon, Niger and Nigeria. Roughly 30 million people rely directly on this lake for their livelihood. Here's the starting part. This was Lake Chad in 1973, and this is how it appeared in 2017. Since the 1960s, about 90% of its water has disappeared, attributed both to climate change and poor water management. This poses a significant threat to the 135 million inhabitants of the region. Given the pressing challenges, the African Union took a significant step in 2007 by launching the colossal initiative, the Great Green Wall. This massive green barrier is designed to span almost 8,000 kilometers, cutting across the Sahel, expected to be about 15 kilometers wide. It's set to cross through 11 different countries. A monumental project with a singular aim to rejuvenate 100 million hectares of lost land. That is twice the size of Germany and almost twice the size of Texas. Converting such a vast expense of land is quite challenging. In this land, you could grow not just hibiscus, but carrots, potatoes, onion, cauliflower. If only we had water. Make sure our channel doesn't dry up and subscribe to our channel. Now, the focus is on sustainable farming. This helps the environment, creates more jobs and ensures steady food supplies. As a result, fewer people need to leave their homes in search of a better life. I used to farm as a part-time alongside accounting, but then I moved fully to the farm and left the accounting. Now for a similar project. 
in Asia at the Gobi Desert, spreading across China and Mongolia. And it's expanding. But there's hope. In northern China, close to the Mongolian border, they are planting trees one by one. It's hard, but important work. They are bringing back trees that were lost, either cut down or overgrazed. They're building a huge green wall with billions of trees to fight the desert spread with the hope to end this. This video is from 2021. A massive sandstorm hit Beijing, China's capital. According to China's meteorological service, it was the worst sandstorm in 10 years. People had to cover their mouths to avoid breathing in sand. In a city already grappling with smog issues, thanks to heavy industries and coal-fired power plants. This is from April 2023. Once again, sandstorms turn China orange. Over 400 million people are affected by it. Since 1978, China has been building this green wall to stop the sand. It's a big project that aims to plant lots of trees by 2050. But it hasn't always been easy. Some trees didn't grow because of mistakes like planting them in the wrong place or using too many. In some cases, the deserts even grew more. Faced many difficulties. Often we plant bushes, but the wind takes them away. It's a natural disaster. The desert is a natural disaster. But now things are getting better and the area is slowly coming back to life. Before all of this, there was only desert. It took 15 years to create this oasis. But the fight against the desert is still going on. The desert is slowly but steadily approaching us. Around the globe, various initiatives are being put into motion to combat this sandy challenge. One of the primary strategies involves planting vast numbers of trees. By creating green banners, the hope is to halt and eventually reverse the march of the desert. Are you liking our videos just like we do? Subscribe for more!